help but stare at the layers of loose leaf paper as each piece was handed out to every one of my classmates. Despite being confined to my desk, one word was enough to get me, a very enthusiastic kindergartner at the time, practically jumping for joy. That word was draw. The assignment was fairly simple. Each student had to illustrate a large red apple, making sure to include a vibrant green leaf and a short brown stem. As soon as the prompt was announced, I yanked out my box of 24 Crayola crayons and began meticulously choosing my colors and glued my eyes to the paper as I became absorbed in my work. Fast forward to one week later, and the hall outside of our classroom transformed from a boring blue wall to an exhibit of drawings with 24 red apples on display that any parent would be proud of. However, my teacher noticed something wasn't quite right with my apple. In fact, it wasn't an apple at all. Instead, random squiggles and shapes littered the page. My teacher asked me what was going through my head that day, and I, thinking the answer was quite obvious, explained that I illustrated a scene in which two warrior masters were fighting with one another to see who was the best. You see, the one night before I received the assignment, I had watched Kung Fu Panda for the first time, and I couldn't stop thinking about those awesome techniques. The squiggles was actually a wolf and a dragon made out of shadows, and the shapes were the mountains in which they fought their battle upon. Of course, I didn't get a very good grade on this assignment, but I drew what was on my mind, and that was way better than any plain old apple. Although the years of me deviating from my assignments has come to an end, I can say that I still love drawing, and I always will. Art brings out an individual's creativity, a part of the brain that simply cannot be expressed in words. It's why we as humans flock towards creativity. We're always trying to find and incorporate new pieces of it into our culture. No matter where you look, you can find creativity everywhere. You can see it in the house I'm standing in right now. You can see it in an engineer's blueprints. You can even see them on the advertisements that litter our TV screens. No matter what your opinions on art are, you have to acknowledge the fact that somebody took time out of their day to create something for a specific purpose. However, one purpose of art that has always struggled to keep up with our busy, loud culture, instead being overshadowed by entertainment and consumerism, is none other than art's oldest practice, self-expression. Emotions serve as a very complex and convoluted form of human nature. And as a result, we tend to struggle to understand and express ourselves to one another. In eighth grade, I was constantly wrestling with my emotions. I didn't like myself at all. I constantly lashed out at the people I loved for the smallest of things. And I had such little motivation that I had trouble doing simple tasks such as waking up and getting ready for school every day. One root of my problem was the fact that I couldn't figure out any reason for why I felt the way I did. And as a result, Others couldn't either. However, despite the loss in motivation, despite the self-deprecation, the one thing that kept me above the tide of nihilism was none other than art. Though I couldn't describe my feelings or why I felt the way I did, I could picture them. And thus, I always used creativity to put my thoughts onto a canvas. While it wasn't a cure-all, I can say that art greatly assisted me in understanding more about myself. And to this day, I still use it when I cannot use my words. While you can run out of ways to describe the pain or joy in your heart, art never runs out of ways to express happiness or anger or more complex emotions. Art doesn't care whether you're good at it or not, as it doesn't even have the relatively similar guidelines to language. You can even say that us humans are a form of self-expression from God, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Months ago, I had the opportunity of meeting a painter by the name of Catherine Vining, who also served as a teacher for over 20 years. As I sat down inside of her art studio, she explained that we were going to practice a method that I had never heard of before. 
Paint pouring is the technique of layering five colors, two of them being black and white, on top of each other and pouring them on top of a canvas. Instead of using a paintbrush to spread the colors around, you tilt the canvas itself, spreading the colors so they create a very intricate design. When I asked her why we were using this method above others, she explained to me an answer which I should have seen coming in hindsight, but that doesn't make it any less significant. Another striking difference between paint pouring and regular painting is that you never know what you're going to get with paint pouring. While with regular painting, you can just think up of an idea of what you want your drawing to look like. With paint pouring, all you have is the colors to work with you, and the rest is a complete improvisation. This was exactly why Mrs. Vining wanted to use paint pouring, as its guidelines are so far gone that anybody can confide in their feelings and find personal expression and significance within the colors. She then proceeded to hand out five cups to me, Three of them I was allowed to pick any color by choosing. Colors I chose were purple, orange, and blue, as I wanted to create something similar to a sunset. You see, that month I had random bouts of anxiety due to the amount of work I was receiving from both school and home, and I wanted to create a sunset in order to calm myself down. I needed something to give me hope as my adrenaline kept spiking. However, when I tilted my culmination of colors onto the canvas, the result was anything but what I was expecting, but instead it was this. What you see here is an image of utter chaos, a place where gravity doesn't seem to exist at all, a place where the colors clash with one another instead of trying to blend, a place that I call a tempest. While it wasn't the sunset I hoped for, it perfectly described my feelings as they were. That whole month had been nothing but chaos, and this painting was the culmination of all of my anxiety. I wasn't the only one participating in paint pouring that day, as Lydia Hines sat next to me participating in paint pouring with me. However, when she participated, her result was much different than mine, instead looking like this. While my inner thoughts represented a slew of chaos, hers was the culmination of fire and passion incarnate. Mine was a tempest and hers was discord. Discord is a lot angrier than, than tempest is. It's really wrathful and it really wants to make itself known. Through this process, not only did I learn more about myself, but I also got to learn about my friend's display of chaos as well. Even though they were just paintings, Tempest and Discord are representations of ourselves, and now others are seeing who we are on the canvas. This may just be one example of how we express our emotions, but what about our stories? In March, I had the opportunity of listening to a man named Justin Reddit. He is the coordinator of the Creation Art Platform at the Correctional Complex in Florence, California. This event wasn't just listening to a speaker, but rather it had a whole art exhibit as hundreds of, of work from prisoners that were displayed on the walls and tables. These mediums range from the relatively orthodox to the abstract, with Reddick having his own distinct style consisting of using mixed media. As an art facilitator, Reddick's job is is to gather prisoners together into one room and have them express themselves using any kinds of means artistically. One difference that I learned between an art therapist and an art facilitator is that while art therapists work with uncovering concepts wandering inside people's subconsciouses, uh, art facilitators work with what their patients already know. Instead of working with emotions, you're now working with experiences. Each of these prisoners have a story of, of, them, of their own to tell. Each aspects of themselves that nobody bothers to look over as all they see is a man or a woman behind bars. They want to show their work to the world, whether that be through detailed paintings on rocks or strange art display of a treasure box and crayons and baby dolls. 
or very detailed sketches of animal headshots that can only be found in the New World. As for the receivers on the other end of these meetings, they just simply listen. They never taunt or mock each other or act confused when somebody's art ranges outside of what our society's version of, of guidelines are. They just listen. Then, after Reddick finished his speech, he did something that I've never seen a speaker do in person. He shared his story for all to see. And as he brought out a canvas, he started painting for us. While the canvas started off looking a bit confusing with him just going over a spot with pink resulting in a pink lumpy hill, as he used different brushes and rolls, the picture began to transform. Remember how I mentioned that Reddick's main specialty is using mixed media in his work? Well, he then bonded a pair of hands from a magazine onto the hill alongside a pair of eyes and a crown of thorns made out of wire. And soon enough, that lumpy pink hill transformed into none other than Jesus Christ himself. When I asked him his thoughts about while, what he was thinking about while he was painting, he simply explained that he wasn't thinking at all. Rather, he was just feeling. He was just painting. What I witnessed was an aspect of Reddick's identity his own story, proclaiming his faith in Jesus Christ. And while he was painting, I was silent. I didn't point or criticize his art or strange overabundance of using newspapers and magazines. This man had a story to tell, and I listened and I understood. Then, after Reddick, when viewing another person's art, no matter how wild or crude or ornate their style is, something resonates within me, whether I can identify the emotions or not. Humans have the strange ability to understand and empathize through creativity. It's how we're able to travel back in time and analyze our culture of the past. And it's how we're able to understand cultures in the presence of, in the present of other countries. Medieval artwork, carvings of hieroglyphics, creation of skyscrapers, they all show aspects of our daily life that it would be much harder to explain in words, especially since there's a language barrier between certain cultures. In a sense, art is the glue that connects, holds, and forms a community. As the world continues to grow and society changes, I have the fear that self-expression in art is dwindling. This isn't just because art's purpose has changed towards monetary value above all else, but rather, but rather because of the fact that more and more people are turning towards an isolationist mindset. And as a result, more feelings are getting bottled and the fear of condemnation for expressing oneself is increasing. If there's one thing about today's society that I've learned, it's that people prefer to talk over one another rather than listen. There are so many people in this world that feel lonely either because they haven't reached out or because when they try to reach out, they've been overshadowed by another person's voice. I want to change that. I am striving to become a better artist, not professionally, but rather in the sense of showing my soul. Whether it be through paid pouring or trying to paint a better representation of my own story, I want to become an ambassador of self-expression, and I want to keep that flame burning bright. Forging a community can be made, you can forge a community through creativity. There are too many people in this world that either consciously or subconsciously judge one another without even thinking of trying to get to know each other or understand what the person they're judging has been through. What if instead of trying to brush past each other, we tried to get to know them better. Or in Reddick's words, what if instead of judging, we sat next to one another? If a person can learn to communicate with creativity, then surely art has a greater purpose outside of consumerism. Mm -hmm.